If you are familiar with Midjourney or any AI generated images from Stable Diffusion, you know that a lot of times it isn't realistic enough to be fooled uh, as a photograph. Now, this is where Magnific comes in and Magnific is an upscaler and I'll just show you the results here if you're dying to see them, which I am, uh, is a beautiful detailer and upscaler. Now, I call it a detailer because it truly just transforms your image and interprets it and adds photorealistic details to every pixel of the image to the point where sometimes you might be wondering, well, I think most people will be full by now that this is a photograph and you've got the baby hairs correct. And you might be right, a lot of people are fooled, but there are some mistakes that it also does. And I wanna talk about the pros and cons of Magnific. This is a subscription-based product, meaning that it's not free, there's no trial, and you're limited to a number of credits that you get per month. And I think that's around 200 to 400 images. You can double check on their website at the time of this video, which might change, and there's different tiers as well. So this particular photograph, I should say photograph, this particular image, Oh Lord, there we are. We are definitely entering a weird time in the space. This image here was generated in Midjourney 5.2 or 5.1, I believe. And I was then able to just get a bunch of detail back and it does a really great job on the fabrics. It reimagines the detail, all of that. And it might change quite a bit. So here's some settings to know that you should really pay attention to. So. I'll use this image as an example, and you can see here the top, it says creativity two, HDR zero, resemblance minus three. What does all this mean? Well, on the left-hand side, it equates to what those settings are. And since you already see the results, we can talk about it. So first thing that you want to do is, after you've subscribed, and I expect in the future, it might be cheaper or free based on whatever your platform you're using. And this is a good example of what's to come in the future. So you're gonna go ahead here and upscale the image and add detail by uploading a photo or a graphic or an image or whatever you want. I'm gonna go ahead and just load one like that. And you can see here, this was originally a 1300 pixel on the long end image, downloaded straight from mid journey, nothing too crazy. And if you scroll at the bottom here, you'll see that the final size will be 1800 by 2624, which is really incredible because then you can pop it up into Photoshop, use that neural filter, and two times it, and you get a very large uh, image that you can use for anything, really, for props, creating assets, what have you, um, blending in that into your own images. It's pretty mind-blowing what you can do. And if you know how to leverage similar lighting conditions of a already existing photograph by popping into Midjourney using as a reference file, you can then generate other assets surrounding uh, your image based on a very similar lighting style, and then put it into Magnific, and then you have assets you could use for your own work. So I hope that gets your gears thinking of what you can do with all this, which is constantly changing. But anyways, this over here, you can see it says it will cost a total of five credits and you get an allocated credit limit per month. And based on the size of the input image, it's gonna increase or decrease the cost. So this one, for example, because it was 1200 on the long end, which is pretty small in comparison, it's only gonna cost five. However, if I go ahead and change this input image and then put in something that I've already upscaled to 2624, you'll see that it's a, well, you can't see it's a larger image, but it is. And you'll notice because at the bottom here, it's gonna say the cost of this upscale will be 15 credits. And this is how much gonna upscale to, which is pretty interesting to note because not only will it upscale, but it's also gonna add another level of detail to it. And so I really don't think this is, the best way to go uh, by using it two times in a row. I think you should upscale it once, get an image you like, and then put it into Photoshop, use a neural filter and scale it up. So if you're interested in learning more about that, I can make a video for you too. Um, and roughly every month, I think you get between 200 to 400 images. That's what it translates to. Uh, if you're not careful, you're gonna go through them quite a bit. And I might be wrong on that, number, so I'll double check out this video and correct myself. And uh, it might even change when you're watching this. They might have even scaled the credits up. So just take a look at the website and you'll get a clear idea of how much the uh, the allocation is. So with that being said here, at the bottom, there's a couple other features to know about. Number one, and this is the 2X. This is not gonna change for now. It might change in the future, which it says it will. And the next thing that I found is you can optimize these upscales and details 
detailers for the type of images you're using. It will come as standard, but I don't think standard is actually um, a good place to start. For my experimentation purposes, standard was pretty generic and it didn't really lend to photographs like we're trying to create with portraits. And you might be thinking, well, then I should just use portraits. Well, to be fair, I use portrait on this one, for example, and you can see here that this is the before and then this is the after, and it sometimes doesn't do a great job. And granted, this might just be because uh, Midjourney might have, for some reason, had a weird texture that got amplified, and this was not a generally good example, but it does serve the purpose of saying that typically with portraits, it's a hit or miss for me personally. And what I like to do instead is like this example, I like to change it to films and photography. Because with this one, I have found much success by keeping creativity at one or two, keeping HDR zero and resemblance minus three. Let's talk about these three here. So creativity, if I bump it up, it's going to start being creative with how much detail it starts adding at a global contrast scale, like a mid-tone contrast range. So it'll add a lot more under eyes. It'll start adding a little bit more of the lines here where you can see she didn't have any. So I am really hesitant about bumping that up too much if I want to retain the same kind of facial structure appearance of the original subject. Um, so I will keep that typically two or less. HDR is zero because when you start bumping up HDR, it starts boosting a lot of the detail to a point where it looks very unflattering really quickly. So keep HDR, in my personal opinion, to zero. Resemblance is a really interesting one. So the lower I go on resemblance, what it tells this kind of application program is that you can stray away from respecting the outline of whatever it is it's going to be detailing. So now you can see here, it will actually change the shape of a lot of it, like the flowers. You can see it changed it, took some creative liberties and decided to change um, how it's going to be uh, blended into the photo or the image in this condition. So I would recommend just keeping those settings and going for it. And if you're looking for the subject to stay very similar, then of course, boost the resemblance up to the positive side. And that's really uh, you know all there is to it. Once you have that done, you can continue just going forward with it and it will do a fantastic job. And then you're just gonna wanna go ahead and click on download and it'll download to wherever it is that you save your downloads. Um, I personally don't like to write any of the prompts here as well, uh, just because I think it sometimes doesn't lend to it uh, in a way that it improves the overall result. However, if you want to, you can give it a shot. You can put in things like um, uh, floral elements and it will possibly um, enhance that. Renee and, I, Renee and I did a podcast where uh, we or she put in, um, I think a specific prompt where it changed it from feathers to leaves uh, on a dress. So that was kind of interesting to play with. So if you're looking to um, change elements about the photograph and take it from another level, you're more than welcome to do so. One other con about Magnific right now, or I should say even Midjourney, is that because there is no <laughs> um, balance between the Sioux, the symmetry, you're also not gonna get symmetry in the upscale, of course. So if you have jewelry, for example, like this one, you can see here that this side doesn't match this one, and you're gonna have to manually adjust a few things. So jewelry is a toss up. So if you try to get a really good example in the beginning of jewelry, it'll do a much better job. So the more detail it has to start with, the better it will increase. So here's another one that I thought was really good. Uh, it really improves the eyebrows quite a bit. You'll notice that over here, uh, this one already had really good eyebrows, but it just adds a lot more, more detail there. The eyes as well does well, <laughs> well as well. Uh, and also the clothing. It's always a, a really nice job on how it does clothing and baby hairs. I think that's really cool. So with that being said, I'll you know cut that off there in terms of the educational aspect. Let's take a look at some of the other images that I kind of played with. Here I use again, um, another image of a cat playing on a sill. I use generative fill to fix some issues too. So for instance, this one you know really wasn't that nice. So what I decided to do was manually go ahead and fix it. Let's see if I did it here. You can see I changed it so it's more cat-like. This this felt more as if it was uh, some type of feathers or something. I just didn't like how it was clumping up. So keep in mind that you can use a lot of tools together now to really bring your vision forward. So I think that's really cool. You can also use um, generative fill to chain the flowers if you want. All kinds of fun stuff. 
let's keep on going here. Same old thing. I was trying to play with some cat images just because uh, I was pushing the HDR on this one. You can see it's HDR1 and the details are really boosted. So uh, be careful. You can see the sharpness here as well. Really pronounced. It does a fantastic job on flowers and leaves. So if you have any still life images, so upscale, that'll do really well. Let me try to find one here that I think is going to be a good example. Oh, or I should say this one. Um, you can see here sometimes it has this issue with uh, mid-journey images producing this texture on the skin. And I don't know why that began happening in 5.2, but sometimes I'll just drop back down to 5.0 and make my creations there and use Magnific. Because here in 5.2, it created this weird texture on the skin. And what that did was it really confused Magnific and it, I don't think it did a good job. Another thing that Magnific does, or I should say Midjourney does, is I often have to fix the eyes. The iris is always off, the catch lights are off. You want to make sure the catch lights are equal on both sides and a photography perspective, they need to match up. Uh, you can see the eye is oblong. So it really does suck sometimes because you have a really beautiful image like this, even nose, where it had the redness in the ears and where a little bit of, you know, kind of peach fuzz should be and it knows the sideburns and everything and how the hair should fall. It's really scary. As a retoucher, seeing this level of detail is really crazy, but then you see stuff like this, which will improve over time, I'm sure. But it's just uh, very fascinating to see. Even does backlight really well. You can see how it kind of really understands that. Again, film and photography, one, zero, and minus five. I think, you know, even at minus five resemblance, it does a fantastic job of just really honoring most of her features. And and so I let it play like that because it does a better job if I let it. And for me, I think it's pretty <laughs> similar enough. Again, the details are beautiful. I could just go through before and afters for a whole video. Just look at the flowers on the head. This is amazing. You know, eventually I said that this will come to fruition in many AI generative platforms, but for now, just getting ahead and, and, and realizing and getting photorealism from your, from your images, I think is really cool. And based on how you use it, you can make your money back in no time, especially if you're using it for composite material or anything like that. So this one was beautiful, two, zero, minus two. So as you can see the, the details on the clavicle here, the neck, it also is true to how the redness would fall but it is looked kind of broken though. So you do have to understand how to retouch and bring some of the stuff back, cover it up, especially the under eyes. You know, I'm not hundred percent sure there. So I think with that being said, I'm going to um, end this video because I could have you all sit here forever and just watch this, but take a look at my Instagram account um, as well as our other platforms where we talk more in detail about how AI can be used in a photography workflow. And I decided to make this video for free just because, you know, we could have included it in the um, feature photo platform, but the reality is that upscalers will continue to change. And this was a really good glimpse of what's to come. And as this becomes more widespread and solidified, I'll include it in the feature photo AI for photographers class and any other tools that I think are going to be useful in a permanent structure. Who knows if Midjourney uh, updates and it doesn't have any good upscalers, then we'll produce a full on uh, class for it as well. So check it out. If you're a photographer looking to really take some of these tools and, and see how to apply them from pre-production to post-production, I think you'll find it very fascinating and illuminating, especially on how to use things like Midjourney to brainstorm ideas and the best terms and words to use because regardless of what platform you use, use the use seeing being able to see how creatives think and the best form of action in terms of how to phrase things can apply to any platform. And I think that's what makes it so magical. So thanks for checking this out. If you're interested in Magnific or any other tools, I'd love to hear about how you're using them because I think together when we explore these ideas, we can open up opportunities that we don't even know exist because these tools are constantly evolving and coming out. And so, so are the opportunities that we can use them as creatives um, and just really get ahead. So yeah, let me know in the comments and I appreciate your follow and subscribe to this channel as well. And I look forward to talking to you in the comments going forward.